think uh, more people are joining in. Right. Hi, Jaspoon. Hey, Molly. Hello, everyone. Hello, Jaspoon. Might be seen. Hi. Hi. So as we just wait, we'll do the introductions and you know prepare ourselves for this. Uh, 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 folks, uh, welcome into welcome to this fireside chat uh, that we are having. My name is Chandra Mauli, and I uh, represent Feedback Insights. And I have uh, uh, my dear friend Jay Smon. He's a senior vice president at ITC Infotech, and he drives the business excellence, which focuses on strategy, corporate planning, uh, delivery excellence, and operations. Welcome, Jay Smon. Yeah, thank you, Mauli. Looking forward to this session. Uh, we, we have quite a few participants now. I think this is a topic which is, uh, you know, which is uh, closer to both of our hearts as well, right? <laughs> Absolutely. A hot topic on understanding what the customer expectations are and how it's going to change. So, uh, you know, uh, what we did was, uh, it's a joint survey that was done, commissioned by ITS Infotech and Feedback Insights. And we reached out to over 200 uh, respondents at decision maker level uh, on IT buyers across the globe. And based on that, we kind of put together some learnings and messages and wanted to kind of bounce those with Jaysmon as a service providers, as a practitioner, hear his views and draw learnings on what are going to be the changing customer expectations as we progress. So to kind of help in doing this, we'll have a flow. The first few minutes, we listen to the findings from the survey. Then we kind of discuss the service providers views on some of these expectations and how firms are going to cope up with it and then look at some trends and then take up some questions. There are a couple of polls that are going to happen in between. So just be alert, look out for those polls and respond. So let me get going on this and just want to kind of share with you some of the key takeaways of this global survey that we did between 27 March and 15th April. We reached out to decision makers and influencers across uh, various corporations. Some of them are Fortune 500 corporations uh, in the US, in Europe, UK, as well as in APAC. So we had 130 odd responses from US, 60 odd numbers from Europe and UK, and 40 from APAC. Now, based on this, we have two important questions that we want to kind of uh, really get to understand. Now, this whole thing is in the backdrop of uh, lockdowns that came in quite immediately in India, as well as across the globe, multiple geographies, lockdown has been happening, partial, complete, irrespective of that, there have been lockdowns. And what are the kind of client concerns immediately after the lockdown? The immediate reaction, and I think the timing was quite topical, and we had the following as top concerns from those clients and across service providers. So this is really not about one client or one company or the other, it was across service providers. And we had elements of communication effectiveness, how well the communication is gonna happen at this lockdown on frequency, what's happening on the business, some of the proposals that we're looking at, some concerns and how quickly it's gonna be uh, fixed kind of concerns at an equal level, business as usual, keeping the lights on in terms of impact to schedule, quality of deliverables, on-site support, and so on. Tech infrastructure was another concern that customers had in terms of how is this going to be done and who's going to be doing this in terms of uh, the VDI that a lot of firms kind of enable for people to work from home, the missions were shipped in, laptops were purchased. A lot of that happened, but those are the concerns that the clients had. Availability of people, will people continue to do? Are people falling sick? Those kind of worries, productivity was another thing. Clearly data security did come in lower on the order initially, but uh, then we kind of followed up this question with what kind of changing expectations people had. And so the questions were, what are the expectations that you have in the new normal? And uh, very interesting messages here again. We had uh, a whole host of things that people did mention in the context of their expectations, topped with the communication effectiveness. And we look at what are the trends that people have in this one security processes and some audits and so on, contingency planning, governance. I'm really reading out of it, but essentially these were the top expectations among the 230 odd respondents. And some of you may just wonder, aren't some of them pretty much relevant even in a non-COVID kind of situation? True, but let's kind of look at what were the kind of interesting patterns on the kind of changing expectations that customers had. So on communication, 
some specific points about special committees, new escalation matrix in case things don't work, real-time communication. I should just admit that there were comments around this instant messaging. Looks like instant messaging is going to become a fairly serious one. And uh, this debate about whether business is going to be conducted on emails or going to be conducted on messaging platforms and collaboration platforms with clients. Looks like the time is quite ripe and customers are asking for this real-time communication through instant messaging and so on. That's an, another interesting one. Some of the other ones in terms of dashboards and real-time dashboards, which can be available for customers is another ask customers seem to be having on communication elements and some verbatim from some of these respondents from uh, uh, an insurance firm, another one from a, a network management firm, some kind of new expectations in the context of new normal post COVID. The second topic was in the context of security process policies and so on. So with all of this changing, this exit onboarding protocols, processes was another one. Um, IT infrastructure, those processes, policies having to align. So essentially security really topped that one in terms of data security. So clearly some of the customers and their changing expectations around audit. So looks like audits are going to be a lot often and a lot more uh, stringent. The other thing in terms of virtual onboarding seem to be another one that's really coming in in terms of a changing expectation. On the contingency planning, while there are some comments that people have spoken about, one thing that really stands out, customers wanted to see articulated plan B and plan C. Articulated, write down the steps and show me your readiness. And it's not really going to be lip service, but in case we need to get on to doing some of them, how can we do load balancing through AI, resource management, some of the GIC is talking about load balancing in terms of uh, uh, across geographies and contingency planning seem to be another key expectation and how our service providers having to kind of scale up to those changing expectations. On the governance, there are some comments about uh, how they would like to see real-time dashboards like I spoke earlier on, weekly meetings becoming daily meetings a lot more of you know uh, uh, stand in meetings going to happen interesting part on this governance there are a couple of comments about wanting to do video calls with on the reviews rather than audio calls i don't know what that means but video calls i found it very interesting that some of the customers are talking about video calls and also about tools and software to track progress and uh, what's happening on some of those agenda points on the infrastructure side, cybersecurity is huge change in expectation. It was not that it was not there before, but cybersecurity purely from the point of view of remote access. How do you kind of ensure that the security? So the key thing is that security with performance. So one of the comments about the VDA tends to have a lag in the way it can deliver. And how can you kind of improve the performance while you maintain security? I think that's one interesting one that's coming in, in the context of infrastructure, some changing expectations. And another 10% changing expectations on new ways of working, you know, and clearly there's uh, 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 remote working. This is going to be a place where it's going to stay on for much longer. Online whiteboarding is another interesting pattern that we did see. Some of the customers spoke about gig workers, ability to kind of get a lot of them to work more on task versus in projects. So it looks like a lot of the companies are seriously looking at newer models and this is a great opportunity for them to experiment with those models. So broadly, the kind of expectations that customers have spoken out in terms of the new normal. So I just get to a quick poll here. Um, all participants, there's going to be a poll that's going to come up just now. I'm going to kind of request you to just quickly look at your, your screen. There's a poll that's coming up. Here's this question, what immediate action should technology firms focus on right after this is over? I mean, whenever it's over or as, as it is starting to gradually go down, what would you kind of choose? Pick one, I know you may feel that all of them are equally important, but pick one of them in terms of what you believe is the most crucial one. It's gonna be a 55 minute, uh, sorry, 55 second, uh, Poll here, so just quickly get on to this poll. We will see the results immediately as we 
complete the poll and we can draw some inferences from there. We have a few more seconds to go. Yeah, we're just gonna get to see the, the poll results in a second now. Cloud oh, interesting. Cloud. Wow. So Jasmine, I mean, that really gets me quickly to kind of get to you on uh, uh, some questions I would like to you know, ask you, Jasmine. So you saw the cloud collaboration 41%, and I think the participants clearly talking about cloud collaboration. But before I get to that question, um, how did ITC view uh, and what's been ITC's view on the impact of this lockdown, Jason? If you could just talk a little about this. Sure, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Molly, for uh, joining hands to get the survey done. You know, showing quite a bit of uh, useful insights, right, for us, uh, and also for the participants here. So I would like to, you know, first of all, thanks, uh, thank everyone for joining the session. To answer your question, uh, you know, I believe uh, you know the service industry will be significantly reshaped by this pandemic. Right. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of opinions uh, out there as to uh, what the impact would be, uh, you know, and uh, what kind of business models and technology transformation will emerge, right, uh, post this. Uh, so whether the distributed operating model will become a norm, et cetera. So there are so many theories out there. But, um, you know, before we get into the details of those things, I want to, you know, just bring out one thing that came out very clearly for all of us is, uh, you know, how the industry uh, how the technology sector as such has demonstrated its resilience in this period, right? Uh, so while this yeah. crisis, uh, you know, all of a sudden developed itself as a challenging one for the industry, uh, you know, it's commendable uh, the way the entire sector has reacted to it. And I'm sure, uh, you know, we will emerge much stronger on the other side of it. Uh, you, know, yeah. you know, many things that we regarded as, you know, really not possible to do has turned into an absolute reality, right? So in a way, uh, as I look at it, uh, this crisis has shown us the art of the possible, if you will. Um, no, no, absolutely. And you know, the whole industry rallied and got almost 80 to 90 percent people up and running in three to four days period, which is kind of unbelievable uh, at the scale yeah. at which it was done. So I think it's commendable absolutely. as an industry. Just, just to kind of follow up on that, uh, Jess Moon, you know, um, how did ITC Infotech react? And, you know, what? how did your clients react to the way you guys acted on those? So there are a lot of things that we have done. So first of all, you know, I'm sure what happened over the last, uh, you know, few weeks, right? Uh, did not, you know, feature in any of our BCP plans, right? Uh, so, uh, so, so, so we worked on the first principles here. Uh, I'm sure mm -hmm. that's the way everybody would have approached it. Uh, that is, uh, you know, from our perspective, you know, we wanted to keep our employee safety and well-being uh, as a number one priority, and our customers, right. uh, our, our commitment to the customer as a close second, right? Now, uh, from an employee's industry perspective, uh, you know, first of all, we enabled uh, almost 100%, 99% to be precise of the employees to work from home um, at the announcement of the lockdown because of the preparation that we have started doing uh, you know, a few weeks before that. So subsequently, we created a war room uh, with uh, you know, that is uh, of a cross-functional team uh, to monitor the progress. And uh, along with that, uh, you know, we launched a 24 bar 7 help desk, but more importantly, we established a mobile support team uh, which came in handy uh, as we had to deliver the support at the doorsteps during this time. Right. Uh, so we, uh, yeah. So we uh, we launched a crisis communication app. Uh, we called it Fight uh, Corona. Uh, you know, to give it a little bit of an Indian touch to this whole thing, right? So we uh, we have also offered this app to our clients, uh, you know, at no cost uh, to help them uh, tie through this testing time. Uh, we also established a daily communication mechanism, um, you know, through a channel called Infowire. I think uh, you know, you know, the survey you talked about, the probably uh, somebody referencing us, you know, virtual onboarding, etc., will become kind of a norm going forward, or at least one of the channels going forward, right? So, uh, we have uh, rightly established that uh, onboarding and offboarding process virtual, uh, you know, so that uh, it, you know people are joining in and also the person, the colleagues who are exiting us. Their life is, uh, you know, relatively easier during this time. So that's something that, that we established. And I think uh, it is working out very well as well. Now, from a client uh, centricity perspective, uh, you know, wanted to give you a little bit of a perspective as to what are different things that you have done. Now, staying connected and uh, being transparent has been the highest priority for us from a client centricity perspective. 
Now we have used several channels uh, for that, uh, including mm. say proactive client advisories and uh, okay. regular uh, communications by our CEO and the sales leadership. So that is one channel okay. that we. Uh, one interesting thing I wanted to bring it to your notice is that we launched a BCP suite. Uh, we we oh. called it uh, you know COVID cockpit. Uh, okay. So it's an integrated platform. Uh, that consists of, uh, you know, an Anaplan based uh, war room dashboard. I talked about the war room that we set up uh, and this is a dashboard that we use to monitor the progress. Uh, right. so, we, uh, so this COVID cockpit is uh, consisting of that and also uh, the fight Corona uh, app uh, that I talked about and uh, the rapid assistant, uh, rapid assist uh, service desk, uh, which was, which we built on the service now and automation in web platform. So, it's an interesting thing in ASCOM called this out as one of the best practices in this space. Uh, in fact, um, you know, I think tomorrow there is a webinar by NASCOM and uh, you know, this is one of the topics that we're going to present as well uh, in the that's forum. Just to you, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. And uh, this, this particular solution uh, basically provides a real-time visibility on the delivery status, the employee productivity, the service and support status, and it also helps uh, you know, the future scenario planning uh, to take proactive decisions. Uh, and to right. just conclude on this particular answer, you know, very importantly, we have launched a survey and which we discussed, uh, you know, uh, right before yeah. this, uh, to no, understand I... the client pulse uh, very proactively, right? Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you presented the, the findings, but uh, some of the things that we came to know about is that the clients uh, responded to the survey very positively and most of them are quite happy uh, that yeah, we scaled up, uh, you know, such a short time, right? So that's in a nutshell. Uh, the various initiatives that you have taken uh, to address this. Yeah, I want to just also get another perspective, uh, Jess Moon, about you know uh, how is IT Synthetic coping with the COVID impacting service organizations, and you know what are the kind of key changes that you are expecting to see in the service landscape post COVID. I, I mean, if you could just talk about it, and I'm sure this is on the top of your agenda when you kind of meet yeah. with the leadership. Yeah, I mean, very interesting question, uh, Mauli. So, you know, uh, we saw the polling also where uh, what are the, you know, the, the uh, you know, the, the, the top of the agenda items for our uh, participants as well. But, you know, as I said, uh, you know, the overall we expect a very positive impact for the tech industry as well. Right? We believe that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the distributed delivery model is here to stay, right? Uh, already companies have started uh, planning models like secure distributed workspaces. Uh, some of the clients have already started talking about, uh, you know, how to enable that, uh, et cetera, right? Uh, nice. So while it's too early to comment on the changes to the business model and, you know, et cetera, uh, you know, it is fairly safe to assume that most of the companies will really cut uh, the technology transformation option. Mm. So we believe, so we believe uh, the services industry will benefit from this change uh, as most right. clients will review, uh, review and rewrite the BCP and the risk plan. Uh, right. and uh, align the technology investments to that, right? Uh, so for example, the investments in the collaboration tool, virtualization, uh, as in the poll, it came out, the cloud-based infra, uh, the cloud-based apps, uh, the security framework, right? To facilitate yeah. this distributed work environment and possibly a big push in automation. I think that is also number two or number three in the in the, in the poll, right? So uh, many call these kind of things as the COVID resilient offerings, if you will. So right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, I, I see that, you, know, you, you guys yeah. have put together the COVID cockpit with a lot of yeah. tools and platforms of Anaplan and ServiceNow and Automation Anywhere. I think that itself is a testimony for how we are putting this together. And I think uh, I take away that you know a lot of them is going to kind of becoming uh, table stakes as we go forward. Yeah. But uh, one important thing that I want to bring out, uh, you know, Mauli, is that. See, the service industry has to keep uh, you know, our story very well aligned to this change, right? You know, what I mean by that is, if we have started looking at, uh, if we ourselves have started looking at our opportunities or capabilities in making it post-COVID ready. Right? So, you know, right. because, uh, you know, the way each capability and service offerings were conceived and delivered, uh, you know, pre-COVID is going to be different, right? So, right. the customers uh, will expect a different, uh, you know, th these kind of solutions or offerings to be to be tuned to that. So that's another impact uh, or change that uh, you know, we put to use. Very interesting, very interesting points of view, Jason, I think, uh, and, and lots to learn from you. Let's just do another poll very quickly now. And uh, let's see what uh, we have here. To, uh, we're just gonna get a poll 
uh, just now and after that we look at some more trends and then we can kind of open up our question answers uh, uh, we're just waiting for the poll to come up uh, again here uh, folks who are just listening in on audio just get to your desk there's a question on what will be your organization's digital priority post COVID-19? You can look at it both from a client as well as service provider's perspective. So choose from whichever way you're looking at it, but all of them may be relevant, like we had the earlier question, but pick the one which is going to be most uh, significant priority post COVID-19. Another 45 seconds, 40 seconds, 30 seconds. So we'll just kind of wait for the findings. Of course, I'm being a researcher, I'm going to start betting on uh, data security, but yeah, well, let's see. Don't want to kind of bias the participants from polling, but uh, can't hold back as a researcher. Yeah, I mean, all of them are <laughs> <laughs> very important in the current context. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a it's a very difficult one to trade off between one or the other. I'm just very keen to see what's playing out now. So data security yeah. as you predicted, <laughs> as you expected. Oh, oh, yeah. Hope I didn't bias it, but uh, but it looks like you know a close uh, second and the third between automation and cloud migration. So all of them are relevant. So so just to kind of pick from here uh, uh, and go into the next one, I want to just share with uh, the audience and everybody across. While well, I don't put percentages here, the trends that we really saw from the voice of customers across service providers, the broad things. Few of them are employee related, some of them are business model related, but I'll just pick out some of them. So one thing that really stared at us was the automation and people talking about how much automation is going to happen. And I think there are enough case studies floating around in the in, in various mediums about how automation is playing a significant one. And in the BPO industry, it's playing a significant one in a lot of other industries. So automation is huge. Cloud migration, virtualization, workplace transformation, and I should admit a lot of companies which never thought of being virtual offices took on to this very very quickly so this whole thing of offshore onshore hubs and remote seem to be a good mix on which this is going to run cyber security and of course there are some events recently on ransomware and stuff like that so those are some of the comments we did see in terms of uh, people working from home and how we're going to manage those i found a very interesting one on engagement with employees you know those jam sessions online gaming quizzes i think that was another interesting one that I found uh, and also some of the customers asking for how firms are going to get training going and how much are they going to leverage on this MOOCs and you know massive online uh, open courses um, that's the set of one and also this whole thing on the governance we did speak about earlier on but newer client models engagement models and client engagement models I found another one particularly very interesting was this thing on vendor consolidation, mergers, acquisition. I want somebody would make one of the respondents made a point about how do you get the plan to kind of have few tier one companies, very large service providers for scale, and some of the tier two companies for niche uh, delivery with high intensity engagement and so on. So that's another interesting trend that uh, some of the respondents mentioned. Gig workers was an interesting one, and I guess. Uh, uh, we've read so much about it, but looks like a lot of what you're seeing here is not a new trend, but the intensity of all of them going to becoming mainstay seem to be an important dimension. Managing Gen Z in the remote working context and without uh, missing out this whole process rewrite tools, methodologies to adapt, adapt the new ways of working. So people have spoken about uh, global agile becoming a normal uh, as we go forward. So. Um, Jasmine, of these, anything that really stands out for you? Yeah, Bali, I think the, the, the security aspect, right? Be it cyber, be it data security, I think in our poll also that came out, right? It was the number one item. So I think that is something that, uh, you know, that's quite interesting. Uh, you know, we've been hearing about cybersecurity for quite some time, but uh, I think this is going to open up a lot of things uh, from overall security aspect, right? So we have also started hearing. So during this particular process, customers started asking us, you know, we have now enabled everybody to connect from home. Now, how your, uh, you know, the security infrastructure that was available in an office environment is getting replicated, right? So that is one big question. So we uh, have also proactively reached out to the customers saying, what are the different steps that, uh, steps that we have taken to protect them, right? So all in all, I think the security, of course, you know, all around that is going to stand, that, that's what, you know, standing out. out, out, out. 
Very interesting. Very interesting. I think we are just uh, five, six minutes away from uh, closure of this. So what we can do, jump into the question answers as we go into it. So let me just start looking out for folks. Post your questions and we can start taking up questions. Uh, uh, do type it into that question box that you have there. We'll just give a minute for people to start writing out the questions and then we can pick up some of the questions, uh, Jasmine. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Okay, there's one which is just coming, Jasmine. This is for you. Yeah. Let me uh, put it for you. Okay. Okay, so this is essentially about, uh, you know, uh, I'm just looking up what this one is. Okay, so interesting one. Um, how do you predict will be the customer buying behavior of services, you know, across various industries post COVID? Any interesting question? What are your thoughts, Jasmine? Yeah, I mean, hey, you know, this, it will change from sector to sector, right? Because uh, the COVID had varying impact levels uh, across sectors. Uh, you know, by and large, it is negative impact, but there are some sectors who are actually doing pretty well uh, in this time as well. So the new priorities will emerge for each vertical. Uh, yeah. Hence, the buying behavior will be uh, tuned to that. Uh, so there could be a shift in the priorities from a demand side perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some common threads that I can see. One is, you know. Uh, digital will no longer be a discre discretionary spend, right? There will be more spent in the digital cust uh, you know, customer engagement, including, say, omnichannel customer experience. Right. Um, and uh, yeah. which was probably synonymous to the retail industry, but we are now hearing that uh, banking uh, customers talking about it, you know, insurance customers talking about it. So the omnichannel customer experience will probably uh, will be one of the kind of things that will affect uh, or you know, impact the buying behavior. Uh, you know, there could be an increased uh, focus in the infra side as a whole. And we, we talk about, I mean, I think the, uh, the findings and the, and the polls are talking about the security, you know, cloud uh, app, cloud infra. So overall infra side, uh, you know, there could be an increased mm -hmm. focus. So the buying behavior could be very well aligned to you know, some of these aspects. Uh, you know, as I can see. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting. Omni-channel uh, appears uh, because... I mean, since we do this customer experience all the time, only channel is going to become fairly a uh, accelerated one quickly. Oh, interesting. That's interesting. Good. Let's pick up yeah. a couple more. I think there are more questions coming up. So maybe this one you can look at about this. So this question is on the you know uh, recovery from this pandemic. Uh, you know, which industry or sector do you uh, see will come out of it early through a V-shaped recovery, and which industry would be part of the L curve? So you have any perspective on this, Molly? Yeah, you know, you know, I, I mean, the, and a lot of research reports floating around in terms of uh, the industries that are going to be having a V recovery very, very quickly. So, I mean, e-com, healthcare, of course, without a doubt, um, things on learning, the whole thing on online learning and remote learning, virtual learning. I think that's a big space that's going to kind of leapfrog in terms of money being spent and schools and education institutions have all latched on, latched on to it. Entertainment apparently, while it may not be the traditional entertainment, but I think the OTT, a lot of them actually seen a surge in this whole thing in the way it's done. FMCG may see a significant uptick, food and beverages. So I think these are the ones that would see a V recovery very, very quickly, and that may be a significant one, but travel, airlines, um, tourism, restaurant, real estate, uh, you know, um of course luxury items and you know some of those uh, uh, lifestyle some of them could be impacted in my view i mean i think uh, very interesting uh, how it's going to play out and i think it's anybody's guess on which is the way it's going to tilt but uh, again it all depends on how the recovery is going to happen from this pandemic yeah we're all really looking forward to a speedy recovery whatever shape it takes right <laughs> So maybe uh, there are a couple more questions we can take, Molly. I think another one, uh, you know, which I can see is, uh, do you see a lot of uh, companies doing stringent BCP going forward, and uh, you know, will automation be a key part of it? Uh, maybe you want to take another shot at it. Uh, on this question. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, I'll go for it. So the thing is, I mean, I just heard one of my client tell me that you know, uh, there's a client who's talking about. Uh, BCP may become part of the contract and not just being contract, but to kind of also do some of these drills, like maybe we have fire drills and all that, which is religiously done, but I could have uh, 
beyond that uh, as we go forward. So that's one, and also automation is going to be very, very significant. You know, um, automation significantly important in the BPO industry. Claims, for instance, so the automation uh, uptick is going to be very, very significant in my mind. And also, if you combine it with cloud cybersecurity automation, if you combine those three as solutions, and like you mentioned sometime back, you know, cloud apps rolled into as solutions is going to become very, very significant. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing yeah. a lot of clients talk about it. Yeah, very, very uh, absolutely. I mean, very interesting. Uh, see, even uh, during this time, uh, you know, whether it is part of the contract or not, customers have started asking, you know, us, you know, what is the BCP policy that you have? They've never asked this in the past, but you know, you have to share the details, uh, the policy document, along with what are the steps that you've taken specific to this particular scenario, right? So, so uh, absolutely. Hey, do we, I don't know. There's one more question. Do we have time for another question? Else, uh, okay, let me just go ahead with this one. And um, so, there's a thing about you know, do you foresee a lot of? I mean, there's a question about saying post COVID. I think it's a point from an earlier trend. Post COVID nineteen, do you foresee? Uh, a lot of acquisition mergers and you know co-built joint built solutions and stuff like that i mean there's an interesting question yeah um so certainly you know this could you know from an MA perspective i think this could shape more MA opportunities that's the way i see it because uh, you know at least you know, so we believe that uh, you know that could be more attractive valuation right, uh, right. related to uh, the co-developed and joint solutions I I think there will be strong there will be strong possibilities along the line. Uh, you know what one thing that comes to my mind is this week we saw Facebook and Facebook investing in Geo, right? Which is a significant yeah. deal considering yeah. the the current environment, right? Where everybody wants to preserve cash, uh, they have chosen to uh, <laughs> be on a spending spree. Right? So I think what it uh, what what it does is while it appears like a telecom and a social media giant coming together, uh, their real target is to build joint solutions for uh, the retail industry. Right. Very uh, so, so as the, the valley is coming to India, I think it is quite likely that similar partnerships will emerge post-COVID. Uh, so you know, both m and and uh, co-built joint solutions are all possibilities. Uh, you know, uh, as, as we see. Excellent. Excellent. No, it's a very, very interesting one. I think really running out of time, I can, what we can do is... No. Uh, Actually, there are a lot of questions. Maybe, yeah, there are a lot of questions that are pouring in. So we will have yeah. to reach out to them separately and uh, post them. Absolutely. So I think folks, please, please send in your questions and, you know, uh, we'll kind of uh, respond back post this uh, session. Um, I would like to you know, take this opportunity. Thanks, Jasmine. It was a very interesting conversation and I really enjoyed uh, uh, this chat with you. And, yeah. uh, Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Mauli. And uh, thanks for all the participants joining on Friday late evening. Right? So I know that uh, during this time, there is no weekend. <laughs> weekend and weekdays are blurred, but uh, nevertheless, you know, thanks for joining us on the Friday. Uh, just after this uh, session, there's going to be a poll that will happen. So please uh, fill that poll and uh, do follow the LinkedIn uh, uh, profile. There are a lot more webinars, very interesting webinars. Do join in. And uh, thanks for participation, participating in today's session. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Thank Jasmine. Thank you. Please respond to the survey that comes out after the close. Perfect. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. Mari. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.